right. Yeah. So 100% uh, customization for each patient's needs. All right. Thanks for that, Bob. And uh, we'll also be touching a little bit on uh, 3D printing because they do kind of go hand in hand when we get into, uh, you know, medical needs and stuff for patients and what to do with that 3D scan technology now that you have it. Um, so let's jump on in. So, uh, you know, when it comes to medical situations, things are a little bit different than, you know, let's say uh, one size fit all applications, right? So when we're in medical, we're not dealing with, uh, you know, baseball hats anymore. So it's not so much that you can have a one size fits all for everybody's needs and just make one thing and have it slightly adjustable. You know, they used to do that for, you know, uh, you know, really low end casts and stuff where you just need to hold something in place and they'll Velcro it in and whatnot. But, you know, everybody's going to have different arm sizes, different leg sizes, posture, bone structures, um, you know, all kinds of unique features that, you know, one size fits all doesn't work anymore, especially when we're talking about having to physically recover if things are in slightly wrong position, then it's going to recover differently and that can have, you know, an effect for the rest of their life if bones heal in the wrong orientation or what have you um and this can also be affected in different you know other medical needs like surgeries uh because pretty much all surgeries are one-offs um there's a lot of like you know you could have a bulk of some surgeries that are all very similar across there's not gonna be a lot of difference between them but then there's a lot more high-end surgeries that are all the get more and more unique uh one of those things would be like uh, things deal with tumors that can appear in any kind of random location in the body can, you know, be interacting with all different features and bones and blood vessels and kind of have to plan how to work around those and how to deal with them. And you can't do a one size fits all solution for that. So the more uh, the medical industry keeps adopting, uh, you know, modern technologies into their workflow, the better it is for the patient outcomes and the doctors and the hospitals and recovery times and all kinds of benefits from it. And it's one of those things with the medical industry is the more you look into it, the more you get a little concerned because you're like, oh, this industry is a lot more archaic than uh, I thought it was. I just assumed, you know, modern, you hear modern science and everything's going to be top of the line and advanced. Uh, and then you start looking into like surgery and stuff. You're like, oh, this is just carpentry on humans. OK, uh, they're just kind of winging it. Um, so the less that a surgeon has to wing it on you and can actually prepare ahead of time. Uh, you know, the more accurate and better your outcomes are going to be. Uh, so, you know, one quick example of that, uh, you know, was this uh, little girl who had a very unique uh, heart condition uh, when she was younger, and the doctors didn't know what to, how to work on it. It was, it was pretty much inoperable because there was no established surgeries for how to deal with something like this, and it's going to be completely unique to, you know, uh, how her heart was working. It had two extra valves on it and stuff. Uh, so what they're able to do was from uh, internal scan data, they're able to 3D print out those models and have the surgeon actually practice on it. And there's something where he's trying to develop a novel, uh, new type of surgery to make this work on them. And kind of by definition, when it's a novel new surgery, this is the first time the doctor's going to be doing it. They're like, oh, I have a theory. Let's go ahead and uh, try this out on them and hopefully it works out. So. When you can actually get an exact replica of a 3D printed version of whatever they need to work on, in this case, the heart, out of like a soft rubber material that can actually simulate heart uh, strength muscles and everything uh, that they can practice, you know, cutting on and working on and moving things around before they actually uh, get into you and start working on it. Uh, you know, it can save hours and hours on the operating table and improve, you know, confidence and outcomes. Uh, but let's look at a couple other uh, case studies here, specifically involving uh, 3D scanning. And so with 3D scanning, there's a company called uh, Autobach, and they've been around for you know, over 100 years. And you know, they actually got started back in uh, 1919 trying to improve fittings for war veterans. And you, know, you could imagine the uh, quality of prosthetic you might get back in 1919 wasn't the greatest, probably a step up from uh, pirate peg leg going on. So, you know, as you can imagine, not the most comfortable, not the easiest things to deal with, uh, not the easiest things to even attach. Um, so they've been working on that for over 100 years for all different types of prosthetics. And they've been constantly trying to innovate 
and uh, you know modernize and stay on top of you know changes in the industry, make things better, faster, easier uh, for them and for the patients that they're working with. And one of the things that's led them to is uh, 3D scanning. And with 3D scanning combined with 3D printing, they can do some pretty cool things. So because every uh, patient's different uh, appendage from where it was amputated to you know, how much remaining, to how much muscles there, uh, you have to factor in the liners, the bone, the socket, all kinds of things you have to uh, work around to get the you know a good fitting part. And traditionally, it's it was a very time intensive process, uh, and it would take lots and lots of iterations. So you'd get your you know socket and everything prototyped up. You you get kind of your final design, and then they try it on. And they, oh, it's you know you need to change it here, change it here. And then you make some changes, and they try it again, and you do some more changes, and you do a lot of iterations. Um, you know, it could be creating things like hot spots where it's rubbing on the leg, which you won't know of for once you use it for. I know, a couple of days or something, bring it back in, get more changes made. And that can just, it's a long drawn out process and it doesn't even really get it hundred percent until, you know, a long time. Uh, and then uh, as things change and, you know, patients' uh, muscles grow or atrophy, um, then you're going to have to get a new uh, socket to fit onto that. And then you have to go through the whole process again. So with 3D scanning, they're actually able to directly visually scan the uh, appendage, uh, you know, the, the stump. And then with that exact high accuracy model of it, they can directly model the socket to fit around that. Uh, and then go ahead and even 3D print it up and have the, uh, you know, end use high strength plastic or even a mold, 3D print the mold to make the uh, socket out of. And when they uh, first started doing that, uh, the, uh, the first couple of patients who's had, uh, you know, worked with Autobach for a while, they were able to come in, uh, get their pen scanned and they had a prototype within 24 hours. And the patient, uh, who's involved in that couldn't believe the results, how it was basically a hundred percent first try. All they had to do was adjust like one screw, uh, to fine tune something in. And then he was good to go and gone were the, you know, days of like multiple doctor visits and customizations and everything you have to do. And it was just right, good, right out of the box. Um, and another thing people have done instead of just scanning the stump, say you have a uh, socket that already works well, you can actually just, and that's already, you know, it's had lots of handwork done on it, like the traditional way to fine tune it in. It's like, all right, now it works great. I want another one of these. Uh, that one, you know, I can have different attachments for. Um, now we can just scan that existing socket and then make an exact duplicate of it right off the bat without having to go through all the fine tuning, custom fitting and, you know, from what it originally was. So lots of advantages to being able to, uh, you know, just 3D scan and get a direct replica or exact shape of something in the digital world. Because that's always kind of the, uh, the challenge is taking these unique organic shapes and modeling it up in CAD. You're trying to get something to fit. It's just like uh, with ergonomics, if you're trying to make something for a grip to fit in your hand, um, even if you like squeeze a piece of clay and now you have to throw a bunch of calipers on it and try and figure out how to measure those curves. Now 3D scanning, we're collecting millions of points of data per second as we scan an object to build up a surface that we can use directly within a CAD package like SOLIDWORKS. So another example is a uh, custom splints. It is really cool. It's kind of along the lines of prosthetics, but where you can make a part to fit over, say, a broken arm, broken leg, cast. You just need uh, stress release, uh, you know, things for your hand. Now instead of having to velcro something on, or you know, again, like they used to do, a big bulky plaster cast. Uh, now we can three D scan your arm and 3D print a fully functional, full strength cast to uh, fit on and use. Um, and these have lots of advantages over the uh, plaster ones, as you can imagine, because the old plaster casts, they're big, bulky things. You have to wait a while for them to put it on. Once it's on, it's not breathable. You can't get it wet. You've we've all seen the, or had the experience of having, you know, itchy skin and stuff down there. People are trying to shove things down into it to get to that edge you can't reach. Uh, cause it's completely inaccessible. 
And then there's also uh, other big downsides of when you're trying to remove the uh, plaster cast after you maybe had it on for weeks or longer. Um, you have, you know, skin issues down there, and then you have to have it recover uh, because it didn't have any air to breathe. And that's, you know, just lots of hardships that can happen from extended cast use. Uh, but now with three print ones, they can be waterproof, removable. There's actually uh, several companies out there doing uh, these cool custom casts. And basically what they'll do is using like a Creoform scanner, you can just have someone hold their arm up or leg and then scan it live. It takes about 30 seconds to get that full kind of 3D scan of the uh, part you need. Bring it into the software, you go ahead and you know, they'll have their own custom softwares they've made to work with that data to model up a cool uh, piece of a, you know, 3D printable splint. And there's a lot of them are designed in like clamshell kind of setup. So you put two halves together and you kind of zip tie them together or whatever. And then they're waterproof, they're breathable, and you can even take them off if you need to do something that you need to take the cast off for and then put it back on really easily. Uh, yeah, so there's a... Uh, you know, people use these all different ways. And another thing is that these can also be used for, uh, say, after the period where you don't need a cast, but you also want to, like, kind of support it. So instead of having to use, like, splints or, you know, the Velcro thing to fit on that you can also get uncomfortable, you can keep using this same uh, cast and splint to, you know, do additional support uh, after the fact while things are still healing up to 100%. And because it's so breathable, easy to use, and nice and you know smooth surfaces on it and stuff, uh, this really improves uh, patient compliance. Because that's another thing that in reality, you know, it'd be nice if patients always did 100% what the doctor recommends, but that's just not true in the real world. So the easier that the medical community can make it for patients to actually follow the recommendations, uh, the better outcomes that everyone's going to see out of that. So a lot of cool advantages, and also. Uh, you get to have a cool cast you get to keep after the fact that you can now show off instead of having the uh, plaster one cut off and thrown into the trash somewhere, which you probably won't want to keep that anyway. So another company doing some cool stuff is uh, Run It CNC and also the uh, the Blood Brothers Foundation. Uh, those are related to the owner from Run It CNC. Uh, they started up that foundation and it's to help uh, you know, they, they act, they're really big into off-roading. They're up in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, and they want to help augment off-roading vehicles so that, uh, you know, people who need assistance actually using them can get their vehicles modified to do that better. And so they start out and, you know, they have a full capability CNC shop with, you know, three printing scan capabilities and stuff. And they do everything from design, to prototyping to full and use parts. Um, so whatever vehicle it is, whatever needs to be done, they customize things to make it fit. And they do all kinds of things, uh, like if you need to, you know, fit uh, seats or adapters or, you know, hand brake hand bars and stuff into there. Uh, and it's really easy to just scan the data they need to bring it in. Let it be the uh, car itself so they can get exact bolt hole locations, shapes of the frame, so they know how to model stuff up to make it fit onto it for fabrication or making things again fit the ergonomics of a person so they might have someone come in in a wheelchair and they say hey i already got this pad i've been using on here they've already customized and this is like the perfect fit i need another one of these to put into my vehicle so that way when i put the wheelchair up in there i actually still have a nice comfortable spot that's all form fitting so now instead of having to try and figure out how to reverse engineer that with calipers or whatever again, right? Now we can uh, scan it and then we'll get an exact 3D surface copy of that at high accuracy. And we could send that straight to a 3D printer, straight to a CNC machine and have it, you know, machined up and then we have the exact duplicate made, ready to go. And this really speeds up the process a lot because again, anytime we're dealing with uh, ergonomics, or having to fit things to third-party stuff that we don't have CAD data for. Uh, you know, it drastically cuts down the amount of iterations and time you have to actually spend on something because you get much more exact on the first try. So uh, all the companies that have been doing stuff like this with, uh, say, Careerform scanners, you know, we actually offer a bunch of different Careerform scanners in the portfolio. So 
depending what you need it to do, there's a bunch of scanners to meet different requirements. Uh, kind of the top level of scanners here, those are the ones that take the 3D scan data and create a 3D scan surface for you. And the bottom ones are more kind of unique uh, one-off situations, like the max shot is for doing really large stuff, you need really high accuracy. The QBAR is just an automated solution for, say, in-process, uh, you know, in-production scanning, or you want to make sure things stay accurate. And Handy Probe is a uh, you know, optical CMM machine, so you don't have an armature or cables or anything attached to it. But on the top ones, we, for as far as medical goes, people usually end up leaning towards the uh, GhostScan Spark. Um, it's the lowest accuracy, but you know, take that with a grain of salt because the uh, like Handy Scan and the Metro Scan. Uh, I mean, the Handy Scan Black Elite has nine ten thousandths of an inch accuracy. Uh, and then you can combine that with the Metro Scan, the Max Shot. People like Boeing use those for you know scanning an entire airplane at super high accuracy resolution. And if we're building a cast to fit on someone's arm, you don't need nine ten thousandths of an inch accuracy to be able to fit that because you know human arms are always moving around a lot more than that. So it still gets very high accuracy. It's just not you know the metrology grade accuracy that say the handy scan metro scan can kick out. And then other things you go into the handy scan metro scan. Those are meant for bigger and bigger objects, higher accuracy, higher volumetric accuracy, things like that. But Another cool thing with the Ghost Scan Spark is that you can capture your color data with it too. So if you actually can need to put Sharpie lines on the skin or other reference information you can get from colors, uh, it will capture the color data too. Uh, so here's a quick video of the Ghost Scan. Uh, we'll see how choppy over it comes through at. <laughs> So if this video is a little bit choppy for you, I'm going to go ahead and paste the link in the uh, chat if you guys want to check it out after this uh, webinar. That was kind of a hopefully not too choppy video for you guys of the uh, ghost scan. And a lot of those videos when they were showing, like when he was scanning the uh, frame of that car, like that was real speed. It picks up data extremely quickly. Um, and you can see when I was talking about like how it's not uh, as high accuracy as the other scanners, it's still very high accuracy overall. So like its volumetric accuracy is, uh, you know, 50 microns plus 150 microns per um, meter of scan distance. So you can get plenty accurate for, you know, human body scanning and whatever you might need it for. But so it works by kicking out a pattern of uh, 99 white light stripes onto the surface in about 15 inch by 15 inch square. And it's recording, you know, almost one and a half million measurements a second and generating a live mesh on the software as you like move it over and you're scanning the part. Uh, so you can actually see if you've gotten enough data as you're getting it. You can even do other uh, stuff in there for the scanner, like uh, uh, 
rigid uh, positioning and stuff, or flexible positioning. So that way, if you're, they're, you're scanning the hand and things move just a little bit, it'll be able to compensate for that. Um, and it won't you know, give you a whole bunch of crazy ghosting, assuming they're not swinging their arm around. And then with that, you can get the capture color data and stuff too. So you see this is actually uh, from scan data. So the bottom on that blue handle of the uh, drill there, it's that's what it looks like without color data. So it's just the raw surface information. And then you can also capture the color data with it at a you know high resolution, uh, you know, really get nice high accuracy things if you even need that for your scan. Uh, some people don't need color data. You can just toggle that option off in the software and then it captures it just as easy, maybe even a little bit quicker. Uh, depends what you need to do with it. The very flexible, versatile scanners that, you know, they kind of showed in the video, it takes like two minutes to plug in, set up and start scanning with it. Um, and even caps and calibrations and stuff. They're, they're very easy to use in mobile machines. So you can have it in a uh, office environment you don't have to worry about bringing the patient into a quality control lab or anything like that. So there's kind of a couple different workflows you can do with 3D scanning. So uh, they all start the same. Uh, you know, we're going to get your part, in this case, someone's arm, and then we need to scan it with a scanner. And then we end up with our mesh, our, light, our actual scan of the uh, geometry that we need. And then from there, you can decide what you want to do with it. If we were in manufacturing, we could do quality control and go in and do gd and t analysis on it. But in this case, we're going to go the kind of reverse engineering route where we're going to say, oh, we want to extract that surface data uh, to be able to model up a you know splint around the outside of it. So that way I can build my part. And so it's very easy. It has a lot of direct APIs with uh, CAD packages like SolidWorks. Um, you can also export the uh, entities into whatever other uh, features you might need, like a step or IGES file, if you have your own custom medical software for generating casts or whatever you want to generate with these. Um, but yeah, so with the scanning, we can scan semi-rigid positioning. Uh, so you don't have to worry about things moving around as much, which is great for scanning someone's face or arms or whatever that might have you know, little skin movements. Because if we are talking at you know two thousandths of an inch accuracy, you want to make you want to have that same rigid on because skin skin moves around a little bit more than that. Uh, you can scan stuff without even having to put tracking targets on it. So if you scan someone's arm, you can literally just scan up the arm without having to say, okay, stay here, don't move. Let me put a bunch of dots or targets or sharpie marks all over your arm. You don't need any of that. You can just start scanning it. So you don't need any other skin prep. Um, the shininess of skin and everything isn't going to affect it. You don't have to worry about it, powdering it down or anything. You just, just scan it right up and you're good to go. Um, you can see in that picture on the top right, that's actually the uh, different level scanner. So that's the handy scan. So those, all those target stickers on that seat is because that scanner works a little bit differently because it's not capturing the color data also. It can't track like geometry. Um, so it, it tracks the part based off of those targets. So again, another reason why people for these applications tend to lean towards the go scan because you don't have to use targets. Once you get to the uh, you know reverse engineering side, we can extract the surface as just like a NURB surface. So if we were like that pipe there scanned, it's really easy in the software to say, hey, generate a NURB surface for this curvature section here. It'll generate a bunch of surface patches. We can send that directly over to a CAD package or whatever package you want to work on it with, and then build the rest of your model up around that. Uh, you can also do, uh, you know, so that surface modeling, there's hybrid methods. You can grab actual entities like planes and cylinders and uh, point clouds, fun stuff like that. But from there, we can generate whatever design we want and uh, 3 print printed up. So with that, as far as uh, 3 scanning goes, I mean, that covers a lot of the, uh, you know, patient need and things we can do with it. Um, but, you know, also kind of tied in, I was talking about the whole time, was like 3D printing. And... 3D printing has been getting a lot more uh, powerful from just like the FDM side of things with a lot of like these casts and stuff would probably be made out of. Uh, you know, a nice, durable, strong, rigid thermoplastic that's, you know, water resistant and all that. Um, but there's also a lot of other like cool high-end machines that the medical industry can also leverage for, you know, making sure they're meeting patient requirements. And one of those would be the Stratus Digital Anatomy Printer. And this is a really cool innovation in uh, the Stratasys 
polyjet technology to be able to print medical grade models. Um, so, I mean, there's been a lot of critical issues in uh, you know, the medical application when it comes to this. You know, they've been you know, practicing and working on cadaver models, right? And then, you know, or you have 3D printed models that just don't have the, the realism you actually need out of, uh, you know, something to practice on, or it doesn't have the specific pathology because it's it's a generic model they've gotten, or the cadavers, you know, also generic to whatever, specific to whatever that cadaver was, right? If you're trying to, you can't really use that to simulate working a completely different case and the odds of finding a cadaver that matches your specific case you want to try and work on uh, are very low. And then you have, you know, other issues with limited variation, um, you know, they're kind of one-time use as far as cadavers and then they can be really expensive too and you got storage of them and everything. So that's where the uh, digital anatomy machine comes in and it can actually print with three uh, very specific materials that there's a tissue material, a bone material, and a gel material. And those are to simulate skins, bones, and like uh, gel for like marrows and stuff. So, and you can actually uh, adjust all these within the software really easily. So they actually have built into the GrabCAD software for the digital anatomy machines uh, over a hundred different anatomical presets where you literally just, as you have your model in there, click on it and say, oh, this is this type of bone and this type of uh, cartilage. And it'll do all the different shore strengths and densities and infills on them uh, for you know, whatever you need. And so it's, it's got it's a lot of power and you know, it's very, you know, they're still office friendly, give you ultra realistic anatomical simulation models to meet your specific needs. And it kind of goes back to uh, earlier where if you're doing a, a, a complex surgery where someone could be on the surgery table for you know, 12 hours or something in a room, if you can cut four hours out of the time by having the you know surgeon and people prep properly for this, they know what they're coming into, they know what they're going to have to do before they actually get to it, uh, that can save a huge amount of time, not only on the patient, but also on the doctor where you don't have to worry about them being, you know, tired and stuff, you know, if you imagine someone trying to do a 12 hour shift of surgery, it's kind of intense and stressful. I mean, you can cut that down to eight hours, you know, that's a lot of time, especially towards the end where they're gonna get more tired and more prone to causing mistakes. So some quick examples of anatomies we can print on there that you can just pick directly from the software is, uh, you know, heart, different heart tissues, you can simulate tumors, uh, myocardium tissues, you know, uh, fibrous tissues, soft organic tissues, you can do blood vessels, uh, like frameworks, aneurysms, and different types of bones, which are really cool and where you can do, uh, you know, it's hard on the outside, softer on the inside, has the specific kind of, uh, you know, foam matrix on the inside, uh, and different sections of bones have different densities too. So, and you can just simulate all those in the software for actually practicing drilling into something and uh, seeing how it feels, what the resistance is going to be, where things are. Uh, so the digital anatomy printer, you know, gets in there, solves a bunch of problems that we kind of brought up earlier. So this helps the, uh, you know, drive the innovation and adopting new procedures and techniques when they can practice on them more and actually, uh, you know, kind of goes into that training in-house and at universities where it gives you the option to have more models to practice on for very specific situations than was ever able to get access to before. Um, also, you know, uh, less of a reliance on the cadaver models, which can be expensive, hard to get, and you have to have very specific storage areas for these. Now you can just 3D print them on demand to actually go practice on. You don't have to worry about storing your models in a big expensive, you know, freezer operation you might have going on. Uh, so some quick examples of uh, models we've done with the medical models using the digital anatomy printer and uh, some of the other machines is uh, again, a uh, bone simulation matrix where you click on it and say, I want this specific bone. They even simulated the uh, bone marrow inside of it. And it'll be like a bone. You can see on the right side of the picture, how it's solid on the outside. It starts getting, you know, softer quote unquote bone structure on the inside. And also all the way down to bone marrow. So you can practice drilling in tapping holes, uh, you know, extracting bone marrow, all kinds of fun stuff. They actually get to get hands-on practice now. That was, you know, much harder for them to do previously. Uh, 
Uh, so we got a question come in there, Tim. Uh, question was, uh, could you import CT or MRI scans from patients for printing models? Uh, yeah, so when it comes to doing that, yeah, you need to make sure, you need to get it translated into a specific format. Um, so if it's just straight, you know, CAT scan, uh, you're gonna need to get that into a format you can actually print with. Um, but then once you using, you know, a third price software or whatever comes with those machines, uh, you can take that data and bring it directly into GrabCAD print. And then once it's in there, you can literally just click and assign materials on it. So you don't have to do any of that signing in the other software. You just need to get the kind of point cloud, you know, CAD, the like surface data from it in different pieces. And then you bring it over and then you can say, okay, this is spine. So this needs to be spine bone. This is cartilage. So that's cartilage material. And it'll sign that to that entire uh, chunk of a part you're able to extract from your CAT scan file. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, with different bone stuff. And then also other things that we can get into with the, uh, like the J750 and 850 series machines that can do very high uh, detailed parts with full color realism and fine detailed geometries. Um, you know, this is an example of like a sinus and soft palette for education, uh, where you can have these pieces snap together into, you know, a full face, but it has all the detail on the inside for how a structure is actually built. If they need to practice running uh, wires or tubes running through, they can get it. And, you know, so it's another thing that makes education better. Uh, where you can get more realistic models, uh, higher accuracy model, more precise models, and, you know, generally for cheaper than medical models would have traditionally cost, especially if you're trying to get something like that handcrafted for medical specific reasons. Um, now we can actually also verify that it meets the scan data, the actual uh, scan data we have for that too. But yeah, so it kind of runs the gambit across the board for all kinds of things you can use the uh, 3D scanning and also 3D printing to help with, but you can get now exactly what the patient needs instead of that uh, one size fits all. It's like, all right, well, I hope you're not too much different from the last one I worked on because that's all I got experience with. Uh, so now with 3D scanning, we can get exact customization quickly. And with 3D printing, we can do direct digital manufacturing of what we need either for end use parts or for practice and training before we actually get that one off unique case client. Yeah, if you guys have any uh, questions, you can connect with us to learn more and for find something that might fit your specific needs. You got a whole range of machines for 3D scanning and 3D printing.